Hey everybody, I'm in front of my brand new 2017 Ram 3500 pickup and I did a bunch of extra stuff to it so I'm going to run through that with you uh, just to show you what I did. Um, I also put together a spec sheet on this that you can get uh, in the notes below. There's a link uh, for how to get that, uh, mainly to make it easier for you so that you can uh, know what to get, where to get it, how much you should pay. Um, you know all that kind of stuff just to make sure that you get the best deal out there possible and uh, so let's run through the specs on this truck the front bumper in particular this is their Magnum uh, bumper which I really like uh, it's not too over the top as far as the bars that go up in front of the grill um, it's got this one light bar here which is nice it's sturdy uh, these are well-built bumpers uh, this is easily 3 6 16 thick material the bumper is super heavy way better than their factory bumper as far as its ability to protect the vehicle and look cool for sure it comes with the uh, holes for the parking sensors with this this truck happened to have uh, it comes holes for all your factory pulls and then uh, holes for some aftermarket fog lamps. She uses factory wiring for the fog, fog lamps, but you have to change them out because the factory ones don't fit uh, with these bumpers. They're designed to have these, these uh, replacement LED lights, which again are in, in my spec sheet. Um, I also did a 20 inch light bar in the center and uh, we wired that into the fog lamp, into the fog lamp circuit so that when you, on this particular truck, all you do is hit the, hit the light on off switch the the button you just push it in it literally just blows up the the road in front of you at night it's just utterly amazing uh, super helpful really really nice feature um, let's see what else on this front bumper uh, I liked it as is uh, it's really what draw that what it's what drew me to ICI uh, and I'm going to show you the the running boards and the rear bumper as well uh, it's a good company good product uh, and I highly recommend it so uh, let's see. Uh, I mentioned that we went with the aftermarket fog lights. Uh, those are those are uh, super bright as well. They surprise me how bright they are for the size and the 20-inch light bar. Uh, let's see. One thing you want to be careful of uh, with regards to the lights, and this applies all around the truck, uh, front and rear, because uh, we had some issues with that that we had to work through, and I'll explain some more of this when we get to the back bumper. Uh, but you just got to make sure that your being careful about the wiring and what you're doing with that because with these newer vehicles and all the computer controls and everything, uh, you'll end up getting warnings on your dash uh, if you don't handle the wiring properly. And I explained that in the specs as well uh, as far as what to do and what I learned in the process, talking to some of the engineers at ICI, the, some of the people uh, from Dodge, and, and then uh, reading a bunch of aftermarket uh, forums and, and also some ins installation forums. Uh, most of the installer shops don't really know the answers to all this stuff, so um, it was important to do the research. Most of what I learned and what I was told to do to make the wiring work right on this and to not get the wiring lights did not work. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, I'll explain that to you in the spec sheet. So, all right, next up is the grill. Uh, this truck came with a factory chrome grill, so this whole, all of this was chrome, and then these little pieces here were chrome. Um, I had lots of options. Obviously, you've seen lots of different grills out there. Honestly, this particular one for me really bothered me. The grill is probably the one I spent the most time thinking about. Like, what are we going to do? How are we going to make this thing look cool? Um, and not, you know, just waste a whole bunch of money. And I'm sorry, but I cannot get past spending $700, $900, $1,200 for a replacement grill. And in some cases, just a grill insert. Okay, I mean, like they look cool to an extent, but to me as an engineer, when you leave this outer frame and then you just put an insert inside of the center section, something about that just looks aftermarket to me. It doesn't, even the ones that look pretty cool, they still look aftermarket to me. I felt like it was better uh, to take this one apart. They're super easy to take out. Uh, explain how to do it in my spec sheet. Uh, everything comes apart. We took these off, sanded them down. We took this off, sanded it all down, even though it was chrome. Uh, pulled the logos out, uh, the emblem out, and 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 went and uh, midnighted that out. And then with the paint on this, uh, we went ahead and went flat black on all the inserts to kind of midnight that out. And then this, we color matched this to the body, but 
uh, we used some different reducer in the paint and we used a single stage enamel uh, and then uh, also uh, did some tricks which I also explain, explain in the spec sheet to get a bit of a rough finish so it's almost an orange peely kind of a rough almost a vinyl-y like feeling finish and I wanted that specifically on this because for two reasons. One, I wanted kind of a satin flat sort of a finish, but more so I wanted it to be super easy to clean. This is very, very difficult for bugs to stick to uh, because it's not a super, super smooth finish. Uh, the rough finish uh, and then of course, you know, putting wax and stuff on it uh, prevents the bugs from being able to stick to the front of it. As of now, there are some really cool bras out there for some of the sports cars, but as of now, there isn't any of those elasticy stretch cool bras for the front of these. So I wanted something that didn't uh, something that didn't hold the bugs really, really well. So that's the grill. Um, again, I explain how to do that in the spec sheets. Pretty, uh, pretty cool. So let's go around now to the sides, and I'll show you the fender flares. Uh, these are, are the fender flares that I use. You'll notice uh, that they are pretty wide. They come off the body a good four inches. Uh, and the reason that I did that has to do with the wheels and tires that we picked. And I'm not gonna do the wheels and tires now because I'm, I'm gonna talk about those last because those are, are took, a, took probably more time to contemplate what to do and how to do it than anything else on the truck, but I wanted it to look exactly right. Um, if you swing around and you look down the side of the truck, you'll see that the fender flares and the tires on the front and the rear, for the most part, line up. And it doesn't look goofy. It looks really cool. It looks like it was made to be that way. And that's exactly what I wanted. Again, I'm an engineer. I don't want something to look stupid. I like having the width and the rear tires, but I wanted it to fit underneath the truck. I don't want the tires sticking out, flinging dirt all over the place. I talked to one guy who, who his tires stuck out past the flares in the rear and he and he said and I live in Seattle you know he said when he drives it's like a hydroplane literally and it just is terrible it's flinging uh, water up on his mirror and it's really hard to drive in the rain and, and of course annoys the crap out of everybody around him so but not just for that I mean I think it just looks cool having it packaged where it fits and having those extra wide flares allows you to go wider on the tires which kind of gives you that that beefier meatier look when you're looking up underneath the rear end so let's see another thing I want to mention is a couple things on here and I mentioned this on the spec sheet for tips but these right here are actually fake they're not they're not the bolts they don't bolt these into the fender they don't damage your fender in any way um, they actually mount using the factory mounts up underneath here and so these are just for looks uh, I wish and, and uh, I've contacted the factory who makes these I wish that they made these in a purely flat finish, something that was really rough, like really orange peely or textury, like what I talked about on the front grill. Uh, and hopefully they'll make a decision to come out with something like that. I, I thought of lots of options for what to do with these. And ultimately I just decided to leave them uh, with sort of this, uh, I don't know, I guess it's kind of a matte finish, very smooth. But the concern I have is if these things get roughed or scuffed, they're gonna look scratchy and, and stuff like that. But so far they look fine. Um, and ended up, you know, ended up just kind of living with them and, and I feel like living with it's probably better than any other option that I had available. So the other thing is uh, just a tip um, and I have this included this in the spec sheet also, but make sure you wax the truck really well underneath these before you put them on. These are probably going to be on here for years and so giving a little bit extra protection underneath there uh, will, will helpfully help any kind of chafing that might happen from these or, you know, anything like that that could happen underneath there. So. That is the fender flares. Let's see, so I wanna show you the steps of the running boards. Uh, these are completely and utterly badass in my opinion. Uh, these are really cool. These again are by ICI. Uh, they're the Magnum series uh, running boards. Really cool, uh, pretty good mounting hardware. I like the way they did it. Could have been slightly sturdier. Uh, in, in, in terms of the, the, the way they mount and the, and the tubing, but overall I'm very happy with it. A 300 pounder could easily step on these things and they're gonna hold them just fine. Uh, the big point I wanna make here is that I went with the wheel to wheel uh, option for the running boards, meaning that they go all the way from tire to tire instead of just cutting them off, they have a, their, their, their main versions would stop here at the end of the, the cab and only have those two steps there. 
they do not recommend using this for the dually uh, because if you notice the back end goes up underneath the dually fender uh, I took a chance with that and decided to just go with it anyways because I really wanted the wheel to wheel look and I hoped that it would work and I assumed uh, that everything up underneath the truck as far as mounting would be the same and my assumption was correct even though ICI probably a salesperson over the phone told us it wouldn't work but I I ordered them anyways because I thought that it would but it's really nice because you can still get to this step you can get up here into the back of the truck uh, without any problems uh, I have seen some that have a little turn right there and they kind of kick out a little bit I, I think this is just fine I'm very happy with these running boards uh, again, I'd highly recommend them. I think these are some of the coolest ones I've seen. I particularly don't like those tubular style running boards. I just don't think they look that good. Uh, and you know, these are these are high quality, thick steel, uh, heavy duty. So let's talk now. Uh, we'll jump in here to the fuel uh, cap area, and I want to talk about that because uh, it has some obvious little additions. Like first of all, I did the cool little diesel. Uh, cap which they don't come from the factory and then a, a nice anodized uh, DEF cap uh, Which is, is nice to have as well. They'll probably get stolen, but who knows? Um, the reason I want to show you in here is is I did airbags on the back of this and uh, I Wanted I wanted those to be, I didn't want those to be mounted in the rear bumper the the, the fittings for the airbags first of all I didn't want the airbags that had the onboard air compressor because I didn't want to have problems with it down the road. I've got easy access to air everywhere, so I just didn't feel like uh, getting that compressor and all that extra hardware and the remote controls they have from all that. I just didn't want all that. I just wanted something rough and dirty when I want to level the truck, when I want to you know raise the rear end, I'm gonna go or increase its its uh, weight capacity. I can just put air in these two fittings that are right here, so it's really stealth, uh, clean. Uh, I didn't I know the most common places to put that on the back bumper I didn't want these off the back bumper um, when I was a kid I saw these hanging off the back of trucks on their back bumpers and they always ended up rusting and looking like crap and uh, These are brass. Uh, I picked an awesome uh, Airbag to go with uh, So I put that in the spec sheet so you know what to get and how much it costs I literally put this in with my boys it, the physical install took us an hour uh, or less it was super easy um, and then running the airlines drilling the holes for these and mounting these tubes and all that kind of stuff took about another hour and we we really didn't take we didn't go at it really quick it was it was easy to do now let me tell you the biggest reason why uh, the airbags aftermarket airbags that I did are important uh, do not order the airbags from the factory and here's the reason why when you order the airbags from the factory they reduce the number of leaf springs that they put in the back of a three-quarter ton truck or, or a one-ton truck. And the reason they re reduce it is because they're taking into account the capacity that is held by the airbags. But what happens when the truck is 10 or 20 years old and those airbags no longer work? Now you don't actually have a one-ton truck or a three-quarter ton truck because you don't have the same leaf springs. I wanted the same heavy duty. I don't really care how the truck rides. I wanted the, the strong suspension and then I added the, the airbags uh, because um, because I wanted to be able to level up the truck when I'm towing and just in general uh, so anyway that's the airbags I put the specs for what to get and the options and the company I went with which I think was it was they were top quality I mean they did a really good job on the design and the engineering of it and they were easy to install so let's jump back to the front real quick and uh, one thing you'll notice on this is the front is slightly higher uh, so <laughs> When, when we were in the midst of putting this on, uh, getting all the different uh, pieces put together, we had the factory wheels and tires. Now, when I ordered this from the factory, I knew I was gonna do aftermarket wheels and tires, so I ordered the cheap steel wheels with the, the plastic chrome covers, and the, I think they were 17 inch wheels. And um, so uh, I, I drove it, I had to go haul and pick something up, and I drove it with those on there one day after we put the leveling kit on the front. And uh, boy, it looked goofy because the front goes up two and a half inches and, and then you've got these tiny wheels on there. And so uh, anyway, it was just funny, but the front end has a leveling kit on it. Uh, again, I put in the spec sheet what, where I got the leveling kit from. Uh, it was super easy to install. Uh, and it actually is right here. This is actually the, the leveling kit itself. I don't know if you can see that in there, but this piece right here, it brings the spring down a little bit. Uh, this particular one, uh, 
was not that expensive. It does the job. It's really thick, solid steel. Uh, it does not require you to change the shock. Um, it has a separate bracket for that. It's really, really a, a nice unit. But I mention that now because raising the front end, you'll oftentimes see that you'll see that the, that the trucks kind of go in this weird little wishy wash thing. Like they come from the factory and the front end just seems a little bit low. And then guys put these leveling kits on, but the leveling kit kind of makes the front end kind of a little bit proud as compared to the rear end, especially when you're hauling something or got a trailer and then the truck looks even worse because the back end's lower than the front. So that was a big reason why I wanted the airbag. So when I'm driving around town, it's unhooked just normal like this. It can be nice and level and strong and tough looking. And when it gets a trailer hooked up to it, just a few seconds, plug a little air in, levels everything up. You get the right drop hitch for your trailer. Everything looks good. It's also safer uh, that way when everything's level and, and the way it's supposed to be. So uh, so that's the, the leveling kit, the airbags. Um, and then you'll also notice here that everything's nice and clean uh, right here. This is just covered with a pack of logos, the Cummins logo and the Dodge logos and the 3500 emblems and all that stuff. Uh, if my, my boys had it their way, we would have midnighted all that stuff out and put it back on. You can certainly do that. It's easy to do. Um, those, those emblems are really easy to take off uh, and, and I explain how to do that in the spec sheet and also explain how to refinish them, um, which I did with the front and the rear. Uh, which we did put back on but i like this nice clean look when you look at the truck uh, overall all right so let's talk about the back end uh, in the bed i did a spray in bed liner uh, which i i prefer i really like that um, it gives you a nice durable finish and uh, you know it's it's really not likely to ever get damaged or or uh, roughed up or anything uh, it is it provides a bit of a non-skid surface the biggest thing is, you know, five, 10 years down the road, you don't have like these big scratches and stuff in there that start to rust and deteriorate the bed and, and ruin the metal and just plain look like crap. Uh, so the spray and bed liner is a big thing. And then obviously um, the huge rubber mat. Now these rubber mats are, uh, you know, there's lots of different rubber mats you can get. You want to get the three eighths or half inch thick rubber mats for the back. And I got the specs for that. This thing is awesome. You can set stuff back here. It's not gonna slide around, move around, anything. It also provides a little bit of uh, uh, noise reduction in case you've got things in the back of there. So um, the other thing I wanna show you just real quick here is hidden underneath this is our uh, gooseneck hitch. So it's kind of cool. You can flip this mat up and you have the gooseneck hitch right here. This is a hideaway ball. Um, and these are the tie downs on springs. You just pull those up. So, so if you go underneath the fender well, there's an arm that you pull out that allows you to pull this ball up, flip it over, stick it back in, and then you can, you can drop your goose hitch, gooseneck hitch right on here and, and hook it up. But the rest of the time, your bed's covered and hidden and, and the rubber mat protects all this stuff, which is really nice. So let's uh, take a look at the, the back end of the truck as far as the bumper and some of the stuff that we did out here. Let's see, so this again is an ICI rear bumper. Uh, and then we did some really cool uh, red uh, shackles. I saw a picture of this somewhere and I just thought it looked cool. I probably wouldn't have done it if I wouldn't have saw the picture, but I just saw it and I was like, man, that looks really cool. I gotta get those. They got them in all different colors. Uh, I got the specs for what size they are because I had to measure these. Um, Again, the rear bumper's got the, the parking sensors built into it. And uh, the one big thing that I did on this is we took the rear bumper out of the box, took it into the shop, and we cut the corners out of it uh, because uh, ICI does not make, uh, in their Magnum series, they don't make a bumper with the rear step corners. And I really wanted that. It was a feature that I felt like was important enough to me to hack away at a brand new bumper and do some welding on it. Uh, which was fun to do but I also did talk to the the folks at ICI and it sounds like the next iteration of these bumpers probably will have uh, a step in them but who knows I could have been uh, they could have been just uh, you know saying that to appease me but uh, I gave them some good input on uh, some changes they could make as far as how they're uh, making the holes for these uh, uh, for these parking sensors the one thing that I'll tell you 
is uh, what you want to do with these um, because this is kind of hard to explain but these parking sensors are designed to go into a bumper that is about as half as thick as this bumper and so the snaps that hold these in don't want to snap into this bumper because the metal's too thick and so uh, what they did at ICI in the factory is they actually cut out a square piece here they weld in a thinner piece of metal but that that piece of metal is still not thin enough it's still actually too thick for these to snap in and so my trick which I'll tell you to do regardless of whether you use ICI or another manufacturer is countersink those holes from the inside before you mount the bumper and make sure these things snap into them uh, and that's really what ICI should do they shouldn't be welding in this extra piece of metal and we talked about that uh, but the design was several years old and so they're they're just they're also outsourcing some of their manufacturing as well so uh, but get a big countersink for those uh, and and countersink that hole out uh, to where these things snap right in and make sure you you paint that surface after you countersink it so you don't end up with long-term rust that comes up around the outside of that uh, so let's see that's that okay let's talk about the lights because this this was the biggest headache from the wiring standpoint was the lights and it actually had to do with this little light right here over the license plate so in the factory bumper they have a light here and a light here and so there's two separate lighting circuits that come back here uh, with bulbs in them and then then there's this one here that uh, it is an LED light that uh, I actually drilled a hole through the back of the bumpers so the wire didn't have to come up over the top of the bumper and I talked to ICI about that too and they're actually they uh, they are gonna make that change uh, and then I did some fa fiddling around with getting this thing to fit in there as well uh, this is the factory uh, hitch connector uh, again because the metal on the uh, on the bumper is too thick for this to snap in and, and stay there and so um, anyway I explained what I did on that it was actually pretty easy to do uh, okay, so let's talk about the lights uh, and I, I won't go into a ton of detail of this because I don't want the, this video to get too long and but I'll explain basically the problem with this is is that you have uh, a, an electronic system in the truck that's looking for these lights these license plate lights to be on when you turn the truck on because they're on all the time um, and so it senses if you cut those wires and you remove those lights it senses, even if you don't cut the wires and you just leave the ends on uh, and you uh, uh, you take the bulb out of it, it'll sense that the bulb is missing and it'll give you a warning on your dash. I think that's really annoying. I would not want to live with that. And so I had to figure out how to fix it. And so I did. Uh, and in talking to even some of the people from uh, Dodge, they said to put a resistor in line. The resistors do not work. In 2017 and later, the resistors do not work. 2016 and newer and, and older, they do work. Uh, so and trust me, I, I, I redid the wiring on the back underneath this truck like so many times I can't even tell you. I was trying to um, troubleshoot what was going on uh, because there's this uh, basically a warning memory in the truck. So it's very difficult to troubleshoot because if, uh, if, the, if you trigger a warning, then you have to reset the battery. You have to reset the computer. Uh, in order to clear the warning, it's kind of like a, a warning in, in one of your, um, like in your OBD2 sensor or something like that. But you actually have to clear that warning in order to be able to, uh, uh, to, to test it again with, with a new circuit. And so I kept having to go through that iteration of figuring out, okay, is this an old warning or is it actually working or do I have to reset or whatever? So it was a total pain in the neck, but I got it finished. Um, and basically, the, the only option that you have on these right now is to leave the factory warranty warning, leave the factory wiring exactly as it comes out. Take it out, take a nice thick Ziploc bag and stick the wiring up inside there. I took the bulbs and I spray painted them uh, with some paint so that they weren't too bright. And then take that plastic bag, the Ziploc bag, put it up around there and zip tie it with a removable zip tie up underneath on each side of the bumper. When the light comes on later that says your your license plate light is out, you just have to undo the zip tie and go in there and replace the light bulb. You just don't have any choice. There's no other option to make it work uh, on these newer trucks because the, the computer systems are so refined that they can actually sense when the bulb is about to go out. It's just, it's amazing. And so uh, that's what I did on this. 
and and it worked and then for as far as running this little led light here it doesn't require hardly any power the truck doesn't even know it's there uh, you just clamp that onto the same circuit somehow i wired it into the circuit but the truck doesn't even know that it's there because it doesn't run it doesn't pull enough power uh, to bother it so all right so that's the wiring uh, you'll notice that we midnighted out this back black logo um, underneath this there's actually a recess in the uh, in the tailgate and so uh, I, I probably would have contemplated leaving it off altogether if that wasn't there uh, but ultimately I like it I like what we did it kind of ties in nice with all the rest of the black and everything back here so so anyway it's pretty cool all right well let's wrap up with the wheels and tires and uh, we'll talk about that and go ahead and let's look from the very back end and you'll see that we've got on the rear end it's super cool looking because we've got almost 26 inches of width from outside to outside of these these rear tires and that's just what gives it that super meaty awesome um, look from the rear end and it just feels awesome uh, for the wheels and tires um, I wanted ultimately I wanted something that was a matte or a satin finish uh, in black and we ended up going with these XD wheels uh, which I'm really happy with uh, and then we went with some all-terrain uh, tires from Les Schwab uh, which which um, you can do something similar wherever you're at um, the wheels are the biggest challenge because you have to get the offsets right on the wheels uh, in order to maximize your tires and your width and to maintain everything. So these are uh, 10 ply tires so the load, our, our towing and, and weight load ratio continues to be as higher, higher than what they were with the factory tires. For the wheels, we went from 17 inch factory wheels to a 20 inch aftermarket wheel uh, and we added uh, something like five or six inches in the rear end of, of tire, tire width on the ground. Uh, these are, are not an extremely aggressive tire. Uh, they do have an imprint of tread on the side of it, but it's not super deep, so they aren't like really annoying looking tires and they aren't going to fling a lot of water. They don't make a lot of noise, uh, but they still are nice and wide, nice and tall, and they look cool. And they've got the sidewall rating that we really need in order to haul all the weight. So the big thing, and I'll wrap up with this, with regards to the wheels and tires, is the front wheel. Now go look at any dually out there, and you'll see that the front wheel has this funky, weird offset on the front wheel. And the reason that they do that is because they want all six wheels and tires to be, to be interchangeable so that you can rotate tires and do that kind of stuff. Nobody ever does that anyways, and I wanted a straight up looking wheel in the front, and so uh, we figured out what the perfect offset would be in order to get this wheel to stand in the right spot to carry the tire so that it lines up nice with the fender flare and we don't have that funky looking front wheel. Uh, so there's some spacers that come in here from the factory. You take those out, you mount the wheel right up front. Um, it, it's really, really a nice combination and it looks really good. So that wraps up the tour of the truck. Uh, go ahead and look in the notes below and you'll be able to uh, see how to download the spec sheet with all the information on where to buy, how to buy, to have a completely badass truck just like this one. If you don't like exactly how this looks, then pick your color, whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter. This is what I wanted, uh, but a lot of these accessories can be customized and obviously you can, you can take or leave you know, the different things, but hopefully some of these tips have been helpful for you. Um, overall, Again, I think I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this truck was about fifty-two or fifty-four thousand, right off of the off of the uh, dealership lot, and I put in about another fifteen thousand in accessories, and and so you could easily get this truck uh, delivered for you know under seventy thousand. Maybe it's going to be uh, sixty-seven, sixty-eight thousand. Uh, something like that, which is reasonable nowadays as far as what these trucks are costing and going for. So anyway, that's what you should expect. And um, good luck with your project. And certainly keep me posted and send pictures because I love looking at cool trucks. So thank you.